Good evening. This is The Point of View. We are live on City TV this and every Monday and Wednesday night. My name is Bernard Avle. The Point of View brings you the right guests. We ask them relevant questions and we unearth some useful insights every Monday and Wednesday. There's a big topic tonight. Is free SHS under pressure? Do we have enough space for the 524,000 BEC students? Almost 500,000 qualified for SSS. Where are the spaces? Should we scrap the boarding system to make it easier? And what happened to TVET education? I have some fascinating guests to help us plow through these murky educational waters. We'll be right back with more. So tonight we caption our show, The Economics of Secondary Education. We have many students who qualify because now SHS is free. Government is spending money paying their school fees, giving them food to eat and finding them a place to sleep. Is that the best approach? Where are the classrooms? Where are the dormitories for our students? I have a development economist and former Director General NDPC, Dr. Nimoy Thompson, as a guest. Doc, good evening. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Great to have you. Thank you. Good to I also have a man who's been in education for 33 years. He passed Director General GES, Charles Ahetochega. Good evening, sir. Good evening. So to set the scene for us, before we delve into secondary education, Pelakanya Ofori did a report not too far from Accra on the tribulations of a junior high school mm -hmm. at Kolimane and Manche to underscore the infrastructure challenges facing one of our schools. No one will speak to us in this school about their challenges, neither the teachers nor the students. Teachers won't open up for fear of being transferred, demoted or even victimized. And students are barred from speaking to the media about the lack of desks. This is the Manchi MA Basic School. Located in the Ga West municipality of the Greater Accra region, it serves residents of Manchi and the adjoining town, Koliman. Residents of these communities are predominantly farmers. There was a time when the Manchi MA Basic School had enough desks, but in the last five years, this has changed. And now quite a number of the students do this, sit on the floor for classes. From primary one to JHS three, you would notice one of these. Either there are inadequate desks or broken desks not fit for use, or simply students sitting on the bare floor. This form two class has enough desks, at least for today. The desks you see had to be moved from other classes to enable them right to the end of term examination. Angered by school authorities' refusal to open up about their challenges, some of the parents stormed the school. And later, this. <laughs> A general announcement in the town for more parents to troop to the school and speak on behalf of the awards. Manchi ME School looks like we have a problem for a long time when it comes in terms of decks for the people in the school. If you get to the classroom, most of them have been sitting on the floor. And once they are writing exams, most of the chairs have been transferred to one classroom so that those in the upper primary will have seats so that they will be able to write the exams. And looks like most of the kids, due to that, some of them are not coming to school. Most of the parents are complaining that whenever their kids come back from school, they have to rewash their uniform before they will be able to put it on back to school again. And it is really worrying. It wasn't just the fathers who were infuriated at the sheer lack of school desks for the awards. Their women were equally disturbed. Mimi ba se oba afen a me me washi ni squatale omu ya three me ma three me washi omu squatale a hata se a young body a ani de se aditi omu di fi etali beba because of cha any school no minti. Papa, 
your friend is an MPC no crown, my delay, I will crumble, I won't name me, I won't bask on the mush, I'm a school, send your tea. My school, my own school, I have a cope, and a kit, I will be at the abac, will be at the abac. Oh, my by funeral, as I'm for my mutinancy, I'll make for my mutual idea into a munya and cunya and fantas, a formal so, a dining way to two. In time, I say, Oh, munya, cunya and trans, or maybe by feeling any man in a fee. The residents of this town desperately want to educate their children, even under these conditions. They hope authorities will come to their aid to provide tables and chairs for their children. For City Newsroom, Pearl Akanya Ofuri. And this is the point of view. So that was Pearl's report from Manchi. This is basic education. Despite all these problems, we have at least 497,000 BEC graduates qualifying to enter SHS. We're going to run some numbers by you to give you a sense of the challenge we face. From 2004, 386,412 students qualified for SSS. Only 70% of them were able to enroll. 2015, the number increased to 412,000 students qualifying. Again, only 72% enrolled, 27% couldn't get in. In 2016, the figure increased to 420,000 qualified, 73% got in, 26% could not. Last year, 2017, 424,000 students qualified. They were enlisted, 14% could not enroll. This year, we're told of the 524,000 students who wrote the BEC, 497,000 qualify. That's half a million. And we are told maybe 5% can't get in, but that's just a projection. It could be more. Let's now show you the breakdown of the number of schools in Ghana. So it's like a funnel. You start with kindergarten, which is 22,000 kindergartens. Very similar to primary schools. Indeed, the primary schools are actually more. 22,089 primary schools. JHSs then reduces to 14,767. And that's 7,000 less than the number of kindergartens. And then look at the steep fall. 872 senior high schools. And this includes private senior high schools. Absolutely incredible. So from 22,000 primary schools, 872 senior high schools. Let's give you a regional breakdown of the high schools now. So the region with the most high schools, unsurprisingly, is Ashanti. 149 senior high schools in Ashanti, with a breakdown of public 105, private 44. Ashanti is followed by Easton, surprisingly, 112. And then that's followed by Bunoa, 110. Central, 96. Greater Christ, 91. And then you have Northern, 76. You have uh, Western 65, you have um, 46 for Upper East, 97 for Volta, that's rather high. And of course, you have 30 for Upper West. So clearly, there's a challenge with the schools. But this manifests itself in a lot of challenges for schools. Because last year, we understand schools had to convert classrooms or classrooms into dormitories. So the first question my guest will answer tonight is, why is this situation, why does this situation persist? Charles Haito Chega, you've mm. been in education since 1986. Mm. You rose to Director General. Yeah. What's going on with these figures? Yeah, well, thank you very much and good evening to our, our viewers. Um, it's very difficult to really explain why we have this funnel that you have just um, um, described. But part of the, uh, the development will, will just be attributed to the fact that uh, we have a, a broad base of concentration um, in terms of ensuring mm -hmm. that every child gets at least basic education or is able to go through um, primary, in fact, in the beginning it was primary education and middle, educa middle school and all of that. So that required a lot of people because that base was very, very broad. Now, as we went up, 
then the numbers then would then come down through the selection process mm -hmm. and eventually uh, lead to a reduction in the, in, the, in the numbers. But I think what we haven't done is to try and do the population with, uh, projections in terms of the, the growth patterns and the number of people who were, um, who were coming down uh, unlike the past where initially there, were, there weren't too many people going into secondary schools, education was not very popular. So you have two, uh, from the year 2000, the numbers literally quadrupling in, in, in the schools, but the facilities not matching the number of people who actually were uh, So you're pointing to, to a lack of planning. Poor anticipation, that's what you're saying. Yes, I think I, 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 yeah, that, is the that case. is the issue. That is the case. So, Doc, you are the former DG of NDPC and you are a development economist. Is this purely a, a problem of planning or there are other issues? <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you very much. Yes, largely a problem of planning. And as I said this morning on the program, there was actually a report. I think, yeah, okay, I see here. 2002 Education Sector Review Report mm -hmm. that discusses these challenges. Yeah. Now, the proper thing to do, given the fact that these kids will have to graduate from junior high school to secondary school, obviously was to make proposals mm -hmm. for the expansion of facilities, mm -hmm. fiscal facilities as well, as well as logistics and teaching. Rather, they didn't do that. What they said here, and this is what I, I was mentioning this morning, they thought of one, there is a clear case for allowing the new schools located in rural deprived areas to complete the SSS in four years rather than three. The Education Reforms Review Committee 1994 and National Education Forum 1999 both recommended the four-year SSS. Another option... In spite of the challenge with space. I, 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 no, no, but that's what I'm coming to. Yeah. It says, another option is to raise the entry BEC from aggregate 6 to 30 to aggregate 6 to 20. This will reduce participation in the SSS to unacceptable levels. So rather than solving the problem, they were kind of wishing it away. And this has been cumulative over the years where we simply, and it's not just at secondary schools, even at the tertiary levels, the universities, it's only recently that the private universities came in to help alleviate that. So a massive problem of lack of planning across board for teachers, for facilities and all that. Again, because we didn't take a long-term view, there were people who were ridiculing the concept or the idea of long-term planning. And I kept telling them, if we had planned these things 40 years ago, we wouldn't be discussing these So this things. is 2002. 2002 so report. we could have salvaged, that's 16 years ago. Yes. If we had properly put in place what, this wouldn't have happened. First of all, made available the resources. Because here, rather than recommending that we should invest in infrastructure, they are thinking about ways of actually restricting access by failing the kids. Which report is this? This is 2002 Education Sector Review Report. Written by who? Well, there's a group of people who wrote it. But Wait, I were you part? Uh, well, this is the outcome of um, uh, deliberations that take place at the annual education. Because sector you were there, review. you were GS there. So I'm, you, I'm, you're, I'm you're responsible so for this. This is, this is a rapporteur's report, <laughs> which is, which is, in fact, it's, it's, it's. So it's why did truth. you recommend that we should reduce the cutoff point? and do all these things instead of recommending more infrastructure. Yeah, so let me, uh, before Doc finishes up, well, the recommendation was essentially, now, if you couldn't get government to give you what you wanted, what do you do? You find a way of ensuring that... No, but this is government. Yes, again, it's, it's government that gives us what we need. We need infrastructure, we are not getting it. Find a way of ensuring that the numbers, the cutoff points are so tight that you can find other things. And, wow. and unfortunately, in fact, when you were giving the statistics, you forgot that we have about... 48 Tibet institutions okay. in this country. I mean, that but is public the public Both public and uh, private. No, no, just, just uh, public. the public. Yeah, uh, it's at much the private larger. level, there are quite a number yes, that yes. are not directly linked to the education system. So yes. those are. On, okay, on so, the sides. so in view of all these problems, yeah. my first question is Was free SHS a good idea? Oh, um, free SHS is a good idea, but you need to manage what goes into how you deliver the free you know and i can tell you that you remember um 1992 constitution we said that article 25 there about and don't help me if i'm i'm mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. um, i'm wrong uh, 
Article 25 says that we will have to give free compulsory universal basic education. FK, now, you yeah. know where the contention was? The contention was on the word free. Well, we couldn't define free. We're not able, and we have never been able to define free, even till today, to say exactly what fits into free and how we're going to deliver free. So free has been on the board for a very long time, but we have never delivered it because we have not defined it. Yet you say it was a good idea. Free, free SHS. If we don't, if we can't define yes, free, why, idea, why is uh, free SHS a good idea? <laughs> no, because then it allows a lot more people to go into the system, and that is where the management issues come. So, so, so you are saying it's a good idea, poorly implemented. Definitely, that's exactly the point. Ne, what's your view? Free well, SHS, good all, idea. The failure wrong. to define free was willful. I mean, when it comes to free <laughs> school, <laughs> they know what it is. They, they know what it is. So it, like, we shouldn't buy into the. It was just, as I said, just a cynical attempt by people in charge of national development, simply failing people. Now, the sad part is that these misguided policies, plus the article I sent you today, where they said the pass rate at 60. I'm trying to access it now. These are all attempts to more or less deprive the poor. Because no way the people who wrote these things would have their children subjected to that. Not one of them aspired to a situation where the highest level of education for their children would be as, uh, GHS. They all made sure that the children had SHS and went to universities, sometimes abroad. But then they condemned the vast majority of Ghanaians to what we see. I mean, go to La Paz now, now uh, 918. Go and see the busy market there. Mm -hmm. These are all, most of them, GHS graduates who just, because somebody didn't do that. So now, what we're doing, uh, the, the free HS thing, is kind of a catch up. I wish it had been timed somewhat differently. That's the problem. So both of you think inherently it's a good idea. You cannot dispute that. No. You cannot do I brought some graphs that I'd like to show you later on because uh, there was a time I was listening, was it yesterday, three days ago, I was listening to radio. And there was a lady who said that, why should I be the one to take care of somebody's child? They have a child, they should take care of it. And a lot of people tend to hold that view. Mm -hmm. But it's not that simple. You are not educating somebody's child. We are educating our children. Because that child who gets free uh, uh, secondary school education today is going to be the architect who designs the building for us in the future, mm -hmm. the engineer who builds our roads, the medical doctor who may save you when you're, you're involved uh, uh, in an accident. So people need to get that into their minds. Now, this thing, I don't know if your camera can pick this I, up. I can let it pick it, yes. Oh, okay, okay. The red lines um, at the bottom there, mm -hmm. the, the, this is... This is our labor market. It's okay. very, very skewed yeah. towards people with little or no education. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So at the bottom here are people with BEC. That's like 33%. Mm -hmm. Now, clearly, with BEC, you cannot develop your doctors, your chemists, your, because you, the very minimum you, need, minimum you need is secondary school education. So BEC, the second one is BEC or less, okay. and then the, uh, which is 29%. And then those who have never been to school, that's 13.9%. A total of 77% of the labor force have BEC or less education. Wow. What year is this? This is 2015. Wow. Yeah, 2014, 2015. 77% of our labor force are simply not competitive, either within Ghana or globally. What does this mean? It means what? The, the next graph. It means this one. Poverty. Yeah. The incidence of poverty. Mm. Those with no education is 37.6%. With middle school living certificate is 16%. BCE mm. is 15.7%. Secondary school, 8%. So even then, secondary school, look at those with secondary school education, only 8% of them are in poverty. And then it goes down as you get to tertiary. So the higher you get to school. Of course, the less likely it is that you'll be in poverty. So doing this is a major social intervention towards fighting poverty and transforming our society. So you made the point, free SHS is important. We need to educate as many people as possible. Yes. So where did we go wrong with the implementation? Because clearly, this semester, we are having challenges. Yes. That's why Professor Anna Mwamensa is suggesting the multi-track system. It, it may very well. At this point, we need interim measures. Yeah. Because the, the whole thing, as good as the idea was, it wasn't properly thought through. Mm. It should have taken maybe once they came into office two or three years to lay it out. For some reason, they were in a hurry. So I say, we've crossed the Dunsu. We burn our boats. Yeah. We just need to look forward now. <laughs> we can't go back. We can't go back. We can't go back. <laughs> we burn our boats now. So yes, we may want to look at the, the shift system. We may want to look at extending 
existing uh, uh, JHS facilities. And here we can bring in the BRRI, Building and Road Research Institute from mm -hmm. Tech. We need to mobilize. This is a, a national emergency of sorts. Mm -hmm. So bring in everybody on board. Call Building and Road. What can you do? What kind of prefab facilities wow. can you mobilize for us to extend existing SHS uh, uh, facilities such that they will become... So you're saying these 497,000 people who have qualified, mm -hmm. we must make sure each of them gets a secondary school we to can, attend. This, that's why I this say year. it's a national mobilization exercise. As really? uh, Thomas Paine said, it is times like these that try men's souls. Mm -hmm. We need to rise to the occasion. Now. Wow. People have put men on the moon. This, is, this should be so easy for us. So let's go through the options one by one. And one moment that says, let's consider a multi-track system. Mm -hmm. no, lo no longer three terms, two terms. Mm -hmm. First term, half of them go to school. The other half are doing project work like they're on vacation. Mm -hmm. Then the next half of the year, the other half goes to school, the other half are doing project works. Mm -hmm. You hire more teachers so that the teachers who work this term, during the vacation, they can do continuous development. Mm -hmm. And then you shift it like that mm -hmm. for at least five years. Mm -hmm. This is his idea. We may, we may want to look into his feasibility. We may definitely, he's more of an educationist. Uh, I'm coming from the economic financing aspect. But from that technical point of view, we may want to look at this feasibility. But while even that, if we accept that as an interim measure, we need to move towards providing permanent facilities. And I'll just, come to that. Let me ask ahead too. Mm. Practically, you've been at GS for many years. Yeah. How feasible is this Anna Mamen's idea? Actually, you know, the moment you talk about multi-track, then you hold everything constant. Mm -hmm. And as I said, we've done this before. In the past, we were going... Um, shift system, people go in the morning, others go in the afternoon, and it's the same facility that holds the different groups of people, okay. which meant that there was no room for expansion. Mm -hmm. You know, if any time population increase, you couldn't find space to put the additional numbers that were coming into the school system. And that is the problem we have now. We have to focus on expanding the facilities alongside ensuring that we have all the things that will let everybody get the opportunity to get into the system. So the system. idea of the multi-track cannot stand alone? The idea of the multi-track no. can never stand alone unless it is accompanied with a systematic improvement in the facilities in schools. Before I come to facilities, I thought we would discuss private schools because when Free SHS was announced, Private secondary schools said they were going out of business. Mm -hmm. They have space. Mm -hmm. They have teachers. Exactly. They are not that, getting that, students. That, that, Should that true. not be the next step before we even think of multi-track? Well, Where I you ask the private schools, how, how many can you take? How much money will it take to train one? Government will subsidize it or something. Yes. Very good. But yes. that, that is where the argument also is. If you remember, when the private schools were making a case for themselves and saying that, look, we are also uh, enrolling. Mm -hmm. I mean, where is our share of the free freebie? Mm -hmm. And somebody says, no, we won't use public money to um, give to private institutions. Mm -hmm. Because you are private sector. Find your own money mm -hmm. and run your place. Then the other option was that individuals then on their own chose to make a choice that they will I will send, send their my kids children to private. to private school. I will send my child to a private school. I will send my child to... And so many of them pulled their So you're saying government should have listened to their private schools and engaged them. And engaged them and created a certain they incentive. Collaborated, collaborated with they them. Collaborated and then with ensure them. that they would... But how feasible is it? It's, a private school wants to oh, make money, right? And a public school wants to give education as a public I can give you a fine example. When the GHS started, yes. government didn't have many middle schools to convert into junior high schools. Yes. But there were a number of private schools that were doing the stage six to secondary school, and now uh, from 1989, they couldn't do that anymore. So they needed a GHS. So they had space. Mm -hmm. So government said, look, we will do a partnership with all of these institutions, uh, these schools that have it. So the GS went into partnership. We put professional teachers into private schools and made sure that certain fees were reduced and, and all of that. And then um, coming to around um, if, if my memory serves me right, around 2000, you know, we, 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 so we it's possible all to that. collaborate it even now, yes, yes. even now, and even uh, it's a mix of yeah. options, collaboration, yeah. even buy out. Yeah, sometime yeah, last year, government actually bought out some yeah. cluster of uh, tertiary level institutions from private schools yeah. and so forth. There are a, a number of options that we need to look at, but the important point is that we cannot backtrack now. It's too late. We can't say, we can't say, we can't say, we can't Let's go back. Why? We can't do that. We just cannot do that. Because it's feasible. We just need, that's, that's it's, what it's public feasible. policy, that's what public policy is all about. Finding solutions to problems. So if you back off, 
And uh, right now, as we're sitting here and through the interviews and whatnot, people are putting options on the table. Uh, the multi-track system, mm -hmm. the collaboration with private schools. Mm -hmm. And private schools, by the way, account for, I think, um, eight, nine percent of total enrollment anyway. Yeah. Yes. The facilities tend to be restricted. This mm -hmm. is where government can come in through some sort of a subsidy for a transition period that we can set for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Either the next four, five, six years, while government is rapidly putting up the permanent facilities. Yes. And they can actually build the facilities around areas, let's say you have uh, four or five uh, GHS facilities, they will all then graduate into one big SHS facility, SHS facility that then takes care of all of them. This can be done. Mm -hmm. This is planning that should have done before the initiative, mm -hmm. but it wasn't done. Mm. Okay, as I said, we've crossed that river. Crossed, yeah. Now, what do we do? Yeah. Bring in VR, uh, a Building and Road Research Institute. We need it. I'm sure they're sitting on a lot of technologies. Yeah. I saw them on So we can put up structures we, we can between do now and yeah. when school reopens. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yes. That will be able to accommodate these no. students. Mm -hmm. in a, right, so just a quick information. We have uh, from the 2016 figures I have, mm -hmm. 579 public schools, 294 private. So that's 34% mm -hmm. private. This mm -hmm. is GES 2016. Mm -hmm. yes. So the private schools are quite a lot, yes, 294. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And it's increasing. Not long ago, it was about 20 something. Yeah. The thing is that because they tend to be smaller, they don't take in as much students as the pri uh, public ones. Yeah. So the public so, schools are bigger. Yeah, they're bigger. Yeah. So in Pansipin, for instance, takes maybe the equivalent of possibly 10 private schools. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, that's that, the that's still issue. But okay. this is where the collaboration comes in. What if we expand the facilities okay. and do the kind of collaboration that you're talking about? And the facilities will have to be something that can be put, that's why I said prefab. Yeah. So you're not now going to get cement and mortar mm -hmm. and all those things. We don't have time for that. We need some prefab thing. But that so you're like a champ on time. Let's, let's mobilize. Operation, we, operation, operation free SHS. Free SHS. Free SHS. Yeah. Yes, operation well, free SHS. If you remember, <laughs> I mean, during, wow. during Professor Mills' time, mm. the transition from the three year to the four year. Yeah, when, I remember the country, You remember, yeah. I mean, mm. he said, look, we are, we are stuck with this four year. Yeah. So we have to do something before these children get to the fourth year or mm. else we are in trouble. Mm -hmm. Very quickly, a lot of mobilization went through. Even the soldiers went and built schools. Wow. Yes. Oh, yes. We'll, yes. We'll, take, schools. we'll take a break. This is the point of view. When we come back, we'll answer a couple more questions. Should the boarding school system be scrapped because it's <laughs> overburdening the free SHS system? What other possible solutions are there before school reopens? What about technical and vocational education? You can send us your comments via the number on the screen or on Twitter with the hashtag point of view. Don't go away. For regular news checks as they unfold, 2020 News, all day, all the time. Politics, sports, entertainment, business and more. 2020 News, we bring you the world in 20 minutes. And that's all the news in 20 minutes. Spend 30 minutes every weekday catching up with all the trending social media conversations of the day. If you tweet it, we'll read it. We might just even Skype you. Just, you know, no matter your situation, you can rise to the top. Absolutely. We really and can. And it's interesting that he wrote this article on the 17th of June. And on the 18th of June, yesterday, he actually scored two goals Woo! in the Belgium World Cup meet. 30 minutes is all it takes, so use the hashtag 30minutes on social media to catch our attention. Join the most interactive social media TV show weekdays at 5 p.m. only on City TV. We spice up your mornings with culturally enriched conversations, social interviews, and policy-oriented discussions that will keep you updated on the progress of the nation. Because we're giving only those in their third trimester. So in the next three months, those in their second would be ready for, to receive the kit. And we're taking data at registration, which is before they take the kit, at delivery and post-delivery, so that we can analyze. And we'll see the numbers. So from the numbers and the data, that we're collecting, we would know what has worked, what hasn't worked, you know. Join the Breakfast Daily team Monday through Fridays from 7.30 a.m. to 10. Let your voice be heard with the hashtag Breakfast Daily. Join us for breakfast daily, only on City TV.
Welcome back. This is the point of view. We're trying to understand how to solve challenges the free SHS has occasioned. Essentially, 497,000 students qualify to go to SHS, but the boarding space and indeed the space we have infrastructure wise is not enough. Already we've discussed the multi track system, we've discussed the issue of collaborating with the private sector. But it's a big one. Scrap boarding schools is not helping. Dr. Nimoy Thompson said this in the morning. You're serious that we should scrap boarding schools? Well, but what was the use? Um, as I said, the boarding school system was set up initially. And in fact, when they started, the entire population of Ghana was like 3 million, yeah. which is the population of the central region now, roughly. So it was small. And therefore, it was meant to be representative. Mm -hmm. You have a few students from uh, the colony, uh, uh, Accra, the Eastern. You have a few people from Western, a few people from Ashanti, a few people from the Northern Territories, and they converge and you do. So it wasn't meant to be comprehensive, just representative. Now we've gotten to a point where we want it all for everyone. And it's not sustainable. Now government is, for instance, paying for kids to, uh, paying for their food. Mm. Now this is something that the kids would have anyway if they, they were living at home and going to school. So why is government taking on that responsibility? What they would not get from home if they were living there is uh, tuition in biology or chemistry or math or English. That the government can do, and so you do that. But if you look at it empirically also, and through my interactions and whatnot, the schools, even the, the, the top ones, the so-called well-endowed ones, are heavily burdened. The sanitation situation is a problem. Substantial parts of their budgets are spent just to empty septic tanks yeah. that were designed for a much smaller population. Now the population has exploded and there's no money. For virtually every school in Ghana has a, uh, a get fund project that's been under construction for the past 10 years, mm. if not more. So we need to back off from this emotional attachment or sentimental attachment to the boarding school system. And so, okay, it got to go. But there are other I mean, benefits. What, what benefits? Bringing us together from Gambaga to Qatar, from... No, so what are those who are not in, in boarding school, school then? What, what well, the, at least those who are in boarding school is a benefit. Some people say but that what it's... what about those who are not? Well, so the fact that there are some who are not, does that mean that the benefit of national cohesion that it, we it get from it... I'm not sure it benefit. serves that purpose. But I've heard people, they say it helps to eliminate tribalism. And it, I'm not it sure. does, doesn't no, it? No, it? It more likely helps in class formation. And not necessarily, because some of the most tribalist people I've ever met in this country were all products of the boarding school system. The tribal based instincts where politicians exploit them, look, uh, they don't have our tribe in the government, so the, it's, it's a completely different thing. That's, that's, that's just not the case. I don't think anybody has verified that. And if indeed that is the case, then what about those who don't go to boarding school? Are they not Ghanaians who also need to be integrated into the system? It just doesn't work. Economically, it's not sustainable. But practically, the distribution of secondary schools, if you were to scrap boarding schools, you're going to have large areas with no schools, and then you have densely populated areas with, uh, like Cape Coast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have about 10 secondary schools there. And I'm not sure you have enough people who can be these students in Cape Coast. Then you can convert some of them to post-secondary school technical schools. But you don't have enough secondary schools. No, you're so saying where they have more not. than enough. Secondary but schools. you have 400,000 people who want to get in. Exactly. Don't forget that we, as we're discussing, we have interim measures and we're going to have permanent measures. So those areas that do not have enough secondary schools, you then build secondary schools there. But, you see, education like health or housing uh, 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 and other basic services, it's all local. It's a local service. The idea that a child must travel from one end of the country to the other just for three years of secondary school education just doesn't make sense. They stayed at home from KG to JHS3. Yes. So what about what, what's three more years? From KG to JHS3, it was day. And then for that additional three years, they should travel. Do you know how many parents travel from Kufordia and, and B and all that to Cape Coast and back and forth, the, 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 the stress involved? Have you traveled from Accra to Cape Coast over the weekend to go and visit? The road is even better. When I used to visit my sister, the road was not this. Just madness. And you get there, the rituals that make no sense. The kid cannot sit in your car. They cannot eat your food. They cannot do this and that. Just hustle for nothing. So we should scrap. But you we, we may have a scrap it or phase it out, but we, we should at least recognize the fact that it's not helping. This, this is not helping. The parents, the, the kids will be fed if they lived at home. 
no matter what the status is. So why is government absorbed? I did the calculation. No, but you, are, you underplay the sentimental value of a former school. So, if, if, so you're saying that essentially if I want to go to Prempe College, mm -hmm. I must live within a 30 kilometer radius of wherever Prempe College is. What is wrong with that? Because but in my your, father went there, he wants me to go there. But it, it, it stands for something. It's like That's saying, part of it. No, it's <laughs> like saying that you want to wear the shorts you wore when you were four years old no. because it's a sentimental attachment. So are you but saying now that, you're grown. Are you saying that old old school, old boyism doesn't make sense? If at some attachment point, to your former school, schools and the values they stand for. You know what I can't say? Time changes. We need to move on. This is economics versus sentimentalism. Good. We really? need to make that choice. Show me one country anywhere in the world that provides free secondary education through boarding But we system. need to separate the free question from the existence of secondary school question. Mm -hmm. For example, pre -sec, Presbyterians built a secondary school mm -hmm. in Odumase. Mm -hmm. They wanted boys to return a certain way. Mm -hmm. Years later, government says, give me the school. Government now, Konongokai, a government now can pay <laughs> yes. for running the board. Now you are saying, I should scrap. Because when you go to pre -sec, mm -hmm. you are training certain things. Mm -hmm. If you spend seven years there, you learn how to weed, mm -hmm. you learn how to sing. Mm -hmm. you, a couple of things you learn there that you didn't learn at home. Uh, but you I'm coming. Uh -huh. So now you're saying, I will pay for it. Now mm -hmm. government is broke. Instead of government finding money to pay for the boarding or whatever, the government says you are saying government should scrap it completely. No, no, no. Government give it back to the school. No. The, the press be chest to manage mm -hmm. them. The no, government government took over those government assisted schools. When we go and they remind you that this is a government assisted school, it's either Methodist or Presbyterian yeah. or whatnot. At a time when we hadn't thought of free uh, SHS of free secondary school education, even changing the name from secondary school. But times have changed. We know, as I showed through the graph, there's the imperative for us to have every Ghanaian child attain at least a secondary school education. As I said, once we do that, and this may take maybe 10, 15 years, there'll be a structural upward shift in productivity. No question about that. People will earn more, government, there will be more t um, revenue and so forth. So there's no question. So anything that stands in the way of achieving this laudable... Not, so we should even, so we should sacrifice boarding school to save free SHS. That's what you're saying. But, Let me take, hold on, okay. think about that. Mm. Is that. Do you agree with this? In fact, um, <laughs> oh, you are confused now. I'm not very, I'm not confused. <laughs> the, the, whole, the whole point is this. Times have changed. Wow. Yes. And as he said, mm -hmm. times have really, really changed. Let me just think back a bit. And uh, I remember uh, Uwe Museveni making the same point about mm -hmm. boarding schools. Mm -hmm. And I said, look, this boarding school system was structured to give, um, it's a latest, he even describes it as a latest, mm -hmm. and um, gives preference <laughs> to particular individuals, yes, and they come yes. out and become a whole. But, but we can stop this boarding system by giving people a choice. You will pay. If you want to go to a boarding school, pay. Mm -hmm. Pay the full cost for being in the boarding house. And so, so free then SHS should not affect boarding. So it should be free tuition and day. Yeah, free and then tuition, the boarding then good, becomes what you good. pay. Now the day thing, give people incentives to want to be day students. I mean, this is a, an environment where we have never found a way of giving people incentives to do good things. I mean, give people, find incentives for people who want to be day students. I mean, we talked about the busing, busing system yes, for children yes. who are going yes, to school, yes. and then somehow it got lost in the, in the maze of things, yes, yes. and now everybody is, is confused. Yes. So the important thing is that if every day student was mm -hmm. going on a bus mm -hmm. for free yes. and getting a small stipend mm -hmm. for working allowance, mm -hmm. who would want to be a day student? Mm -hmm. So we can replace this whole boarding system. In fact, part of the things that we talked about was that we, 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 we sought to uh, divide the secondary schools into four stages mm -hmm. and said that for all those who are attending the well-endowed schools, so-called well-endowed schools, uh, oversubscribed, we didn't even call them well-endowed, mm -hmm. oversubscribed schools, who were even in real sense performing well and had a lot of the facilities that most people wanted uh, to, to, to access. We said, look, all those children who go into those schools mm -hmm will pay full fees for everything. Now, then we went down to the next level and said, those who go into the next category of schools that we had, will pay 75, then the third one will go pay 50. Now, when you do that, you will get all those, I mean, if, if you have a child from Bonsasi uh, Bontifufu who performs very well and goes into Wesley Girls, isolate that child for a scholarship. Because that child really is somebody you can count on. No, but under your proposed system, Bonsasi Bontufufu can't get to Wesley Girls because she has to be D. 
No, no, no. What I'm saying, I'm going to from no, Sassy no, 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 to Wesley no, Girls. That's the more. alternative I'm giving you. I'm giving you the alternative apart from the total scrapping. I'm saying that you can keep it. If you want to keep it and you love it so much, keep it. But everybody who enters a boarding school must pay. So you are giving us two options. Yeah. If so it means that the, the, the free should not cover the boarding in your the proposal. The free should not cover, cover the, boarding. the boarding. The free so boarding should be facility. optional for those who can pay. For those who can pay. If you want to pay, go. And then the, the, everybody else will get free day Maybe school. Everybody else will get free day school. Now, does that make sense to you? My Again, there's still the, the element of elitism there and the likelihood of stratification where the rich will end up clustering around particular schools because, as you said, mm. they were thinking about quote-unquote well-endowed, a, a phrase yeah. that really takes me off. But it's already happening. No, but that's the, the, the rich are taking that's their the kids to schools that's outside even the public secondary school system. I, I, that is a, a re, you should read a book by Professor Diamonds, the former VC of uh, Ligon. It's Education, a Tool for Social Mobility or Social Stratification. Mm -hmm. It's a compilation of his lectures. Fascinating book. Mm -hmm. And that's the mistake that we are making now, now, now. And you the blame boarding school for this? Partly, I'm, not, I'm, partly. I'm saying that within the context, because the boarding school system has outlived its usefulness, but I'm saying that in addition to that, we need to be able to create, he talked about creating uh, incentives for uh, day schools. I would somewhat put it differently. Mm -hmm. Provide them with the resources. Let them excel anywhere. Mm. We shouldn't create this uh, idea that the only way you can do well is to travel from B to Central, from yeah. Central to Volta, or from Volta to, no. We should be able, to, and this, this can easily be done by having a list of facilities that every single secondary school in, yeah. in Ghana must have. Yeah. Wow. And once you do that and you create the conditions, under Professor Mills, I think each school, day school, because it, we also need to destigmatize the day schools. Definitely. Somehow That's they it. think it's inferior. Yes. But if yep. you are there, look yep. at some of these things. You have nice uh, uh, yep. landscaping, nice yep. buildings, even swimming pools. In yep. an ideal situation, yep. I'd like to see every secondary school with swimming pools, tennis courts, and all these things, so that we have a well-rounded uh, uh, student. When after a break, I will read uh, an excerpt here for, for you. This is from uh, Sir Gordon Gogisbert. When his, his views... His idea. No, no, his views on education, education. in 1926. <laughs> wow. You would think that he's talking about education in Ghana Let, let me read some comments and then okay. after the break you can read those. Right. So right. uh, here are some of your, your well, thoughts on um, yeah? <laughs> the, 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 the subject we're discussing. Whether free SHS is having problems, whether we should scrap the boarding system. And whether the multi-track is the way to go. Uh, David Osabote has a long one, Bernard. So we are back this evening to talk about whether free SHS or not. The truth be told, I visited my senior high school Ketasco in April this year. You won't believe what I saw with my own eyes. Mm -hmm. Teachers' bungalows have been converted into boys' and girls' dormitories. Yes. Teachers now reside outside the school. Students' numbers have increased with no expansion in dormitories. Mm -hmm. Dining hall, classroom blocks, concert. We can provide all these, and the president says he's undertaking free SHS. A country that can't even print passport for citizens thinks it can <laughs> undertake free SHS. What a country. <laughs> David Osabote. Another one, the system is rotten. JHS is private, is better. Secondary public is good. Uni public is better. I just don't get it. That's from whom? What's the name of the I person? think it's still David Osabote because okay. it doesn't have Then Rex says, Bernard, the problem is the complete neglect of professionals in this country. We have these fine men on your program giving excellent lectures on how to resuscitate the educational system. My question is, were they not in Ghana prior to the passage of free SHS? <laughs> also, did he include all he's saying in the recent development plan, national development plan? That's to you. Hi, Bernard. Please, what's the update on the community SHS day? Yes. Partially completed by NDC government. Ghana is sleeping. Francis from Tema, you can give us an update on that. Mm. Um, hi, Bernard. Great show and good evening to your panelists. In fact, the multi track system being proposed spells more doom for us. It would be so out of place for the boarding school system to be scrapped because of the poor thinking that went into the implementation of a good policy like free SHS. My view about people, my world view about people improved and my appreciation and acceptance of people from all walks of life was consolidated during my secondary school days in Maui. Let's not allow free SHS to collapse the boarding house system. This is a weak solution to the problem of free SHS. Holali Yao Haliga Sefiamo from Tito. Good evening, gentlemen. In as much as I agree, free SHS will go the extent of helping parents save some cash. What college of education are, is the system giving our kids, brothers and sisters, considering the congestion we have in the system? Will the system be sustainable when this government finds its way out of office some days now? That's Sefiamo. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll read more comments. 
Find out Gagesberg. I'm told his name is Gugisberg. <laughs> Gugisberg. What Gugisberg thought of education. <laughs> and read more about what to do to bridge the infrastructure gap. Are we going to do a national emergency? And what about TVET? What role does it play in all this? This is the point of view. Don't go away. Thursday night on City TV. You're welcome to join women from different backgrounds and opinions as they weigh in on your relationship issues. Watch Sister Sister as the ladies get real with issues about love, marriage, betrayal, sex, dating, trust, finances, and more. Join Jessica and her sisters for City TV's all women talk show, Sister Sister, every Thursday at 7 p.m. Also, live on 97.3 City FM. Spend 30 minutes every weekday catching up with all the trending social media conversations of the day. If you tweet it, we'll read it. We might just even Skype you. Just, you know, no matter your situation, you can rise to the top. Absolutely. We really and can. And it's interesting that he wrote this article on the 17th of June, and on the 18th of June, yesterday, he actually scored two goals Woo! in the World Cup meet. 30 minutes is all it takes, so use the hashtag 30minutes on social media to catch our attention. Join the most interactive social media TV show weekdays at 5 p.m. only on City TV. Welcome. Welcome back. This is The Point of View. My guest, Dr. Nimoy Thompson, he's a development economist, immediate past DG, NDPC, National Development Planning Commission. Charles Ayatochega has been working at GES for over 30 years, immediate past director general. Both of them say free SHS is great. It will reduce poverty. It will move our, our nation structurally forward. It's run into difficulties. We need a national approach to dealing with infrastructure. So, Ni, nee, you've given us some views on infrastructure. Take me to Gadgetsburg. What did he say about education that's so relevant today? Yes, I'll ignore the first part and go straight to the middle of the sentence. He says, in my opinion, the system of education in this country is rotten at the core. That's what was 1926. That's why, as you see, David Osawati also used the word rotten. That's what I was asking you. Wow. He says, in my opinion, the system of education in this country is rotten at the core. Not only is it inadequate in not going far enough, but it has proved inefficient in its results. Yeah. Wow. Inadequate because it fails to provide facilities for the secondary and tertiary or higher education, which is essential if the African is to become an efficient citizen and to qualify himself for leadership in the affairs of this country on the conditions attending the advent of modern civilization. <laughs> inefficient because character training necessary to citizenship and leadership has been largely omitted in the existing system and because actual primary education imparted at our schools has seriously failed to give results except in comparatively few instances. He even goes ahead to give us the number of students who, are, who graduated, I think, 200,000 wow. or so versus the number of vacancies available and so forth and so on. The interesting thing that this, these problems have recurred over and over. Mm -hmm. This was 1926. Mm -hmm. And Krumah tried to address it, and, yeah. but even he faced challenges. There was the 1954 uh, wow. Accelerated uh, Education Program. Mm -hmm. And then we had the 1961 uh, Education Act. Act. That's what I was telling you about. The Accelerator Program made primary school free. And then the Education Act made it compulsory. And I said, as I said, when Nkrumah also did that, he was faced with the same challenges. Yeah. Nkrumah, why are you going to get the facilities? We don't have facilities. Mm -hmm. You are making education compulsory. But then he called upon the chiefs and whatnot. Yeah. That's how come, as I said this morning, I went to school at a chief's palace. And so, so Nkrumah faced the same problem. He faced mm -hmm. a challenge. But where there's a will, you always find a way so out. So maybe that justifies why Nana implemented pre-SHS, despite all the challenges. But you know Nana is a closet Nkrumah is. <laughs> yeah, because the way he's gone about it, everybody said you need to wait. And that was his first, indeed, when we did the first Meet the Press, mm. his first policy was free SHS. Yes, yes. He, and he, he introduced it in his first year. He was, he was passionate about it. it the sequencing maybe should have been different. Mm. But as I said, we've reached here. 
Mm. We, we are here already. So how do we meet the infrastructure gap again? Okay. Just give now, me some ideas. They, you talked about uh, the day schools. I the day schools, yes. Um, yeah. As you mentioned, in Pat, I visited a couple of them. There's one at Aguna Street that's close to my heart. It's called Fankoba. When I was a kid, Fankoba was my oh, team. Yeah, Fankoba. Fankoba. yeah but oh. they named it after the school. Nice. And the headmaster was my like childhood friend. So I visited there. Relatively good facilities. But the software, Fankoba. so to speak, for the that's school Fankoba. still is lacking. Uh, libraries, I mean, the books. We are told some of the schools are in the middle of nowhere. So there's no road leading to the school. But that's why Professor Mills, who originally conceived this thing, said that each school should have at least three buses. buses. And these buses were to, just as private schools do here in Accra, they were to meet the kids yeah. at certain locations okay. and pick them up, take them to the school. And ideally, I don't think he talks so about... So they're not supposed to walk to school? No, 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 no. The buses will pick you up. And so they will congregate at particular parts. But the 200 that uh, were started, we understand only 40 were completed. That's because, again, the funding approach was different. It was a bit deficient. And that's why we need to... Be, and I, that's, So that takes us to the issue of infrastructure. Now, yes. I was just telling him, when I was DG and I would travel abroad, people would come up to me, Ghanaians out there, that, uh, Doc, please help me with my Get Fund scholarship. But back mm -hmm. when they have instant, that's the first time I realized that the Get Fund was actually being used for scholarships. Abroad. Yes. Yeah. But I remember when the debate started that they were going to use part of VAT for that. It was meant for infrastructure Such only. Yeah. But somehow, they brought in these soft issues that lend themselves easily to abuse. So we should reconfigure the we Get should, Fund. We should completely revise it and make it 100% infrastructure. Yeah. And then, you can leverage it to raise funds up front to finish all the outstanding infrastructure and then use the flows that come in there to service the debt. Simple, we can finish every single get fund building. Of course, we need to watch procurement fraud because if the thing costs 500,000, yeah. you go and put the one. Because I was going to tell you that our research, even in the health sector at mm -hmm. City News, showed that we've made business of putting up buildings. Locking up money in concrete and abandoning the building they just all to get our ten percent. They are all yeah. over the place. Yeah. They are all over the place. One of the things with this is the infrastructure plan for the long term plan, and we talked about infrastructure getting value for money, development of a database of unit costs for infrastructure, mm -hmm. so that there will be a basic yeah. cost for school buildings, and then the variations will be localized. So if you finish the two hundred community day schools. Mm -hmm. This problem would not exist. It, will, it, it, depends it depends whether or not it would be... Because we had 800 secondary schools. But it will, it will mm. grow... Uh, because even this one, it, after uh, they did... How many... Uh, the, the number of day schools that were constructed, I noticed that... About 40 were finished. The, the number of students out of secondary school actually went down slightly, the percentage. Mm -hmm. So clearly there's some effect of that. And so if we do our best to complete them, there will be a massive... But, but the funny thing is that last year, the allocation for free SHS... Almost all of that went into recurrent expenditure. But that is Nothing went into infrastructure. Yes, that's exactly the point that we uh, we are raising. We we we're putting money into uh, things that we can't really see sustain, value, yes, sustain and yes, see value for. Yes, you know, we school are fees. We are, we are, we are, uh, what buying you, what food, what you, guys you call it what, low hanging fruits. You know, mm -hmm. so you're busy plucking the low hanging fruits because uh, some of them are not ripe, but they are low. So you want to just block it because you want some mango to eat uh, on the go. You know, so that's where the challenge really, really, really is. You know, and it's important for us to begin to. And you we were talking about the numbers over the years. We've, you. Know, incrementally try to increase the number of secondary schools. And all the efforts that have been made so far is not to build boarding schools. In the past, from 1991 through to this time, we have built largely day schools. So you have this 250 somewhere in 1991, mm -hmm. and then you have the recent uh, 240 or 50, or need the proposed 200 schools. All of them designed to be day schools. What role does TVET have in this? Well, some of the schools were supposed to be um, designed to offer TVET programs. So it's just you build the schools and then you ensure that. It's, but TVET, uh, it, it's, it's, it's another very interesting area mm -hmm. because, it, I mean, if you remember when we were talking, we were very much more concerned about grammar schools and we were talking only about SHS. You know, we, we forgot that we still have. Uh, some former TVET institutions, have 46 of them, okay. that are doing a variety of uh, TVET programs and, and a number of things that the children are, are learning a lot 
Okay. I'm going to read some comments and you pick and choose which ones you react to because they are quite a We have just five minutes to go. So uh, here are some comments. Random from North Lagos says, Hi Bernard, I'm getting confused. Is the problem about implementation of the free SHS or lack of funds to implement it? If it's about funds, why doesn't government cater only for tuition and parents cater for boarding and feeding costs? The government already So that's Randolph from North Lagos. Okay. Um, Peter in Hohwe. Bernard, free SHS should be abolished completely and introduced progressively free senior high school education per our constitution as stated by a previous government. It's not logical when most parents in Ghana can afford fees of the awards yet under free senior high school. Let's come together and say no to this waste of resources. <laughs> uh, already the performance is declining. This is Peter from Hohwe. Uh, Ni from Apam, I'm enjoying the show, but I think if we want to solve this problem, teachers know the solution too well, and hence policy makers should be speaking to teachers for solutions. Again, these challenges are too basic and require lay approaches. More comments, Samichum Achimota. Good evening, Bernard. This is what I think. Free SHS is very important and must be sustained. That's point one. Point two, Professor Naman Menses' proposal can't work to save free SHS. Point three, government must adopt the fantastic idea shared by your wonderful panelists. Point four, I support the boarding school system must be scrapped going forward. And finally, as I've always said, we must address the rate of population growth. Otherwise, we'll always face these challenges. Samichum. It says we should address population growth. You are a development planner. No, no, it's, it's no. not true. The population growth is not. I mean, what does, what does a child being born today have to do with the fact that the, the cost of a school building is inflated? The problem is the living. Those of us who are here who are corrupt and doing that. It's not the name, our population, I've been hearing at the head of the National Population Council being very alarmist about population, but mm -hmm. all the, it's one of the things I printed, I didn't bring it here. Our fertility, fertility rate has been uh, falling, falling, birth yeah. rate has been falling, yeah. The population rate, growth rate itself has been falling. So we don't have a problem of too many people. No, no, We're not, it's, a popula it's a problem of distribution, concentration, and improper fiscal planning. So you have all people concentrated in it. Get out of our crowd going to Kofodia yeah. through a breed and look at all the land there. It's just uneven spatial distribution. That's the problem. So you reject the idea that we should reduce our population growth rate. How are you going to do that? Put Family planning, give them no. empowerment to control their sexuality. We actually because the it. poorer people, don't forget that there are poor people, teenagers giving birth to kids and their grandmothers have 28. And who are those te teenagers? They are Girls. predominantly poor. No, 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 not just poor. Let me explain something to you, a very critical statistic. At class one, there are more girls than boys, yeah. 51, 49. Mm. And then as they go through the educational system, there's attrition. Yeah. By the time they get to tertiary, there's seven boys for each three girls. Yeah. What happens in between there? They drop out. Teenage pregnancy. Sometimes a, a girl is sitting in classroom and she's yanked and forced into marriage to go and marry someone old enough to be her grandfather. So the population, and, and this is an old debate, over 60 years old. Is it a question of education? Because if you provide equal opportunities for girls, so that they stay in school rather than leaving. Because if you get It naturally out, controls the population. Course, so if they get to school, they have more power to control when they give birth. No, first of all, once you stay in the educational system to tertiary, you marry late, you start having children late, and it's unlikely that by the time you're uh, 25 or so, you have six children. Yeah. Chances are you have two or three. So everything is solved by education. Education and, of course, opportunities. And one wow. of the things we did at NDPC was the demographic dividend and how to take advantage of that, wow. provide opportunities. But if we're not doing that, yeah. if contract, again, the issue of contract fraud or pro procurement fraud is very critical. Because if you double the price of a school building, that means you get half the number of school buildings that yeah. you need. My guests have been Dr. Nimoy Thompson, yeah. a development economist and former DG of NDPC. We've also had Charles Ahetochega, who is a former director general of GES. My name is Bernard Avle. Thank you for watching The Point of View. Stay with us on CTTV.